let's look at two organisms. We've got a poodle and a Labrador. Are they of the same species? What I can do is I can get them to interbreed and have a baby together, have offspring. And the offspring they have is something called a Labradoodle. And I look at the Labradoodle and I ask myself the question, is that Labradoodle fertile? Can that Labradoodle have babies? And if the answer is yes, then poodles and Labradors are of the same species. Now I can look at a lion and a tiger. Are they of the same species? Well, I can get them to eat and to breathe. And weirdly enough, lions and tigers can have offspring together. They're called ligers. So is a liger fertile? The answer is no, ligers can't have babies. This tells us that lions and tigers are of different species. We have a name given to ligers and other animals which are the result of offspring of two different species. We call them hybrids and most hybrids are infertile. The binomial name is a combination of two Latin names given to identify any species. So for instance, lions are called Panthera leo. Panthera is their genus name and leo is their species name. Binomial names are useful because they tell us, can tell us how closely related different species are and because they're in Latin, we can use them in any language. We can have some difficulties with classification. Not all hybrids are infertile. Some hybrids are in fact fertile. That's confusing. Also, some organisms reproduce where there's only one parent. If there's only one parent, like bacteria only have one parent, then we can't do interbreeding experiments with them. At the higher tier, you need to know that mallard ducks can hybridize with other closely related species to produce fertile hybrid offspring. And also that some types of gull, that's a seabird, form something called ring species where neighbouring species can in fact interbreed.